hey you, here's your heads up to this, well, the longer podcast. It's all about having the most perfect morning routine, having the most perfect evening routine. No, it isn't. It's just a matter of not feeling guilty about not having the perfect morning routine, about not having the most perfect evening routine, and how to, well, get what you want and have a routine, a routine that works for you. I'll I'll explain how you're going to do that. Just have a listen. Warning. 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 You are entering into the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. Clough. Too late. Personal development unplugged. Hello. Hello to you. Pleased to be back. Well, I'm pleased to be back. Hope you're pleased to be back. And before I start this podcast, I owe a great debt to a guy called Simon because he noticed I had made an almighty bloomer. I'd made a huge mistake. Back into the FMQ about those five little words, five little words that change your life. I'm not gifted. I'm driven by a a guy called David Goggins with a G. And I'm, I actually said his name was Coggins with a C. I wrote it down with a C. And, oh, I feel so bad. I feel, you know, our name is part of our identity. You know, we introduce ourselves by saying, hi, I'm Paul. That's my identity. My name is my, becomes my identity. And I got it wrong. So I am profoundly apologetic. So sorry. If David Goggins is listening, I do apologize. I really do. And thank you, Simon. Thank you, Simon, for listening so acutely and letting me know in such a nice way too. So thank you so much. Anyway, let's get on with this thing about routines. Routines. You hear so much about routines. And the reason I'm thinking about this is because I've recently I was coaching a a lovely lad in Australia. And he was saying he was having real problems. He knew the value of having a morning routine. And the morning routine I'm thinking, he's thinking of is like your journaling, your gratitude, um, act of gratitude, thinking of being grateful, maybe a stretch, a bit of exercise, maybe just taking some time out, meditating. But the thing is, he got up at six o'clock in the morning to go to work and he was out the door within 15 or 20 minutes. He said, I just don't have time. I could get up earlier, but I'm so tired. I, when I finish my work, I have my evening and then I go to bed and I just know, just know I'm not going to get up an hour earlier to do that. And it's really getting me down because I know how important it is. And you see, he knew how important it was and he was feeling guilty about it. And that's not the whole, that's not the point about morning routines. Anyway, then that reminded me, and I wonder, I'll tell you in a, in a short while what, what we, we worked out. But I was also working with uh, a lady a little while ago. She was a life coach, and she knew the importance of having a morning routine. And she said, you know, I really, I really need your help, Paul, to hypnotize me, do something so I could have a morning routine. So I said, well, tell me a little bit about your actual morning routine at the moment. She says, well, I don't do my journaling. I don't do my stretching, my yoga, my meditation, you know, my, and they're all the same type of things. I said, no, no, tell me your actual morning routine. She says, well, I get up pretty early because I've got to get myself ready because in a short while, my three children are going to wake up my, and my husband's there as well, but we're all going to get together because we've got, I've got to make the breakfast. I've got to make sure their school dinner's are ready, you know, they're packed lunches. I've got to make sure they're, they're dressed, they're, they're, they're all sorted. And then I've got to do the school run. And then I've got to come back. And then only then do I start my work. And I've, my work's planned out. And I just feel, and, and this word guilty kept coming up. I feel guilty because I know I should be. And as we've said before, we should all over ourselves. You know, we should do this, we should do that. And yeah, and there's, and the thing is, there are some great examples about of routines, morning routines. 
is it, there, there are people who get up at 4.30 in the morning. As a guy does a podcast called Jocko Willin, Will, Willikin. I hope I've got his name right, please. Uh, he's an ex-Navy SEAL. Gets up 4.30 in the morning. Starts his exercise. He's done by half past five, six o'clock, ready to start the day. I can't see half past four in the morning myself. I just can't do that. I could, I guess. I could if I really, you know, put myself out there. But it, that's not me at the moment. But for him, that's what he does. That's what he's used to. That's his own, I guess, personal discipline. And that's awesome. Then you've got the Tim Ferriss. The Tim Ferriss? Yeah, he is the Tim Ferriss. I love Tim Ferriss. Does a great podcast of deconstructing um, excellence and, and interviewing people. And he shares his morning routine. He shares his evening routines too. And they're awesome. Now, he doesn't get up early. Is he worried about it? Is he guilty about it? Don't think so. In fact, I think he says it with a smile because it's not for him. But he has his morning routine. He loves to do mainly his journaling, I think. Journaling, gratitude, and a bit of stretching. There's other stuff, but he shares that. And you can see. And if you search YouTube and you put in morning routine, you will get hundreds of examples. Now, I'm not sure whether all those examples are what people actually do or what they'd like to be seen to be doing. I'm a little bit sceptical. I know, Cluffy, you know, but I know people like the Jocko Willikens and the Tim Ferrises of this world, they do that. They're actually walking the walk, not just talking the talk. And they're doing it as a shining example for us because they've found out what really works for them. But I think the real thing is they're not doing it to make us feel guilty they're sharing their experiences. They're sharing what works for them. And this is the whole point where we talk about that integrated field of learning. They're sharing their learnings, sharing their experiences. Now, I'm going to guess if you looked at their routines every day, there's going to be one or two that they miss. But we always like to, to show the best bits and the thing about it is, you know, if you're comparing your not so good bits with the best bits of other people, that's you're going to lose, aren't you? And you are going to feel guilty and guilty for no reason. Now, I don't mind feeling happy for no reason, joy for no reason, pleasure for no reason, but guilty for no reason. That's a that's a that's just BS, isn't it? So. What I want to do, and, and how I explain to the, the, these people I was coaching, is they are examples of what works for somebody else. They are routines. They're, they're just simply routines that they've have happened to pick that work for them in the morning. And they are, a shine, they are shining examples. Um, and you need a shining example to show you the way, to light lighten up your path as it were but the thing is how do we remove the guilt how do we remove the guilt and follow their examples well I thought about myself because you know I have a morning routine well I have a morning routine that is a bit a bit splattered a lot, I guess splattered is not the right word it's you know my journaling I love my journaling and most mornings, I will journal. I love my yoga. And most mornings, I will stretch. Only 10 minutes bef before I have my cup of coffee. Before I do anything, I'll just stretch for 10 minutes, have my cup of coffee, and then I'm ready to, to have a walk the dog. And then I'll journal. Do I do it every day? Mm, not really. There are some times in my journaling and I'll write, oh dear, welcome back, Paul. It's been a week. Do I stretch every morning? No, I know I should. But then I think to myself, well, I didn't stretch this morning, but I've actually gone to the gym. And when I've gone to the gym, I've had a really good stretch 
after. I've done my stretches, but not in the morning. And that's the thing what I want to lead you to, to, to let this guilt go away, because there are some things you can commit to. And if you could get up an hour early, and that was really in your mind because you're getting up too bloody late. No, I can't say that. But if, if you could get up an hour early, yeah, you could do these things. And you would do them virtually most mornings. But here's the thing. I think what, what stops us is that we try to do it all at once. We say to ourselves, here we go. I'm going to start a new morning routine. I'm going to get up an hour early and I'm going to do all this stuff. And it's just such a shock to our system that we you know, maybe just feel tired the rest of the day and say, well, how did that help? It was like going to the gym the very first time. Do you go to the gym the very first time and run six miles on the, on the, on the tread, tread machine thing, treadmill, treadmill, you know, and then row for half an hour and then lift weights? Well, sometimes we do. And what happens? We hurt ourselves, we injure ourselves, and we say to ourselves, never again. That was so unenjoyable. And what we have to do is make this enjoyable, because if it's not enjoyable, what's the point of doing it? You know, there's no point in forcing yourself to do something that is of no interest to you, is not important to you. Because when you make it a joy, it will become something of, I think, value to you. Because all these things will bring value. They will make a change. They will make a difference to your day. But the thing is, if we try to do them all at once, we get that overwhelm. And then when we get overwhelmed, we don't do it. Guess what happens? Oh, we get more guilty. So what I like to think of is, first of all, I have this thing in my mind is, if I don't do it, I didn't do it. There would be a reason. Unless I'm just a lazy old thing, then I need to give myself a little a sharp talking to. But the thing is, there are some days where we just have to lay in just maybe that little bit because we're a little bit tired and our body needs that rest. Or we have other important things to do in the morning. Sometimes you have to get up early and do something else. But the thing is, instead of trying to do it all at once, if you just wrote in your old Jenny journal what you think your morning routine could be or you'd like it to be. And then what I'd suggest is you say, okay, well, which one could I do with ease? With the old Tim Ferriss you know, question, if this was easy, which one would I do? Or you could say, well, which one would make, make the most difference to my life? If I just did that one in the morning, and then if that was easy, how would I do it? And then just commit to do that one thing in the morning for the next seven to 10 days. And then if you wanted to, what I'd suggest you do first is then just, re instead of just adding something new onto that, just review. Take that five minute pause and say, you know, let's just review the effect the effect on my emotions, the effect on my health, my energy levels, my connection, my communication, everything about it. What was the effect of just doing that? And once you know then the, that it's a, hopefully it's a positive effect, that positive effect will then lead you to say, well, what else can I do? Because if that had a positive effect, what else could I do? But already I'm thinking to myself now, Am I falling into a trap? Am I falling into a trap? What trap are you talking about, Cluffy? I'll explain. You see, the whole thing about routines are, we've now put a title on them, morning routine, evening routine. Why aren't they just routines? My routines. Because you see, I know if I don't meditate in the morning, I know my day will not be be a disaster. But I know I will meditate during the day. 
And that'll be fine by me. I'm, they call it, at peace with that. Because I know I'll be doing something for me. And if it feels right in the morning and I've got time to do it, I will do it. I found a lot of times now before I get up, I will just spend a few moments just breathing properly, concentrating on my breathing. That is meditation. When I do my stretching, I use it as a meditation and a bit like mindfulness, really noticing and focusing on the muscles I'm stretching, my breathing, my relaxation. And I'm thinking, hey, yeah, I've done a little bit of meditation, but I can do it a bit later too, because it's a routine. My daily routine. Ooh, Cluffy, have you hit on something here? Because the thing is, as I said to the guy, the Aussie, <laughs> I said, you know, when you get to work, you say, well, I've got a really busy morning up until about 10 o'clock because I've got to get things going. I've got to get people working. I've got to organise that day for them. And then I said, well, do you have maybe 20 minutes then? He said, oh, well, yeah, I could have, you know, instead of reading the paper or, or whatever, yeah, I could have 20 minutes. I said, well, what would happen if you just took yourself away or sat in your, you know, in your van and either meditated, or did a little bit of journaling, or just sat there. If you've only got five minutes, what would happen if you just thought about the things you're grateful for? You know, your act of gratitude. Because yes, it's great to write these things down, and I suggest you have a little notebook that you could write them down as you think about them, and just leave it in your hand, because that's where the best place for it is. He said, well, of course I could do that. Everyone can do that, can't they? Mmm. There's a thought. And I thought to myself, I, mean, I said, do you have one of these things called a mobile phone? And he looked at me like an idiot, because I was then. And he said, well, of course I do. He said, does it have an alarm on it? He said, well, of course it does. I said, well, if you know you're going to be free at, 20, at 10 o'clock, why don't you put on your alarm? Gratitude, 10 a.m. Or journaling, 10 a.m. Or just pausing and thinking, 10 a.m. Or maybe there's another time, you know, there's a time between meetings at 12.30. And just say there's a block of time for 15 minutes. Out of all those things I want to do, what could I do? And he said, well, that's so simple, Paul. Mm. Because in simplicity, there is genius. And it's not me being genius at all, because... This is just looking at something outside the box, I guess, slightly saying, this is just a routine. What would give me the most, you know, the best return on my investment, as in the time I've got? And if you've got this, this list of things that you've written out that you'd love to do, that you think you'd make a difference, yeah, I do believe that if you have a, if you have got a little time in the morning, if you have, then Fill it with something useful, be it a stretch, be it a meditation, be it a journaling, be it time just to pause or think, but any one of those. But if you haven't, what time have you got in the day? Maybe your morning routine would be and could be your afternoon and evening routine. Because thinking of being grateful just before you go to bed, is that a bad place to be? I don't think so. Getting to feel that feeling of, of just being grateful and the joy that that brings and the things that you really appreciate of your life and going to sleep on that, hmm, that might be a good thing. Thinking of, you know, just setting your intentions five minutes before something happens or you're going to do something, not happens, but if, if you're going to do something, meeting somebody or you want to make an effect, even if it's setting your intention to do some of these routines, these the, the elements of your routine. It all comes down to, I think, a couple of things, maybe two or three things. And I wrote a big note on the top of my, my notes. Yes, believe it or not, I still make a few notes in my lovely big journals. And it was, be flexible, not guilty. And that's all it is. It's just looking outside the box. There are things I want to do with my day that are going to help me grow. Because we're on this thing about growing. Not guilty. We want to be growing and learning. 
And it's, you know, when we're flexible and we can adapt to the day, because every day will be different. I hope every day will be different. So, you know, if you're flexible, forget they're not guilty now, that's out the window. If you're flexible and you commit, you know, commit to being flexible and then noticing in your day, how can I put things down in the day? Look ahead. Even if you, your morning routine was five minutes looking at your day ahead, seeing the gaps that you could use your routine in. I mean, some people love to go to the gym right early in the morning. Some can't make it until the evening. I go in the daytime. I go around about lunchtime. It's just how it fits for me, how it fits for them. I'm not guilty that I don't go in the morning. I love doing my bit at that my particular time. It's something I look forward to and it's something I can relax from. It's all a matter of just being flexible and being, I know, content, I guess. Content that I'm doing the best I can. And I know I can always do a little bit more. And we're always going to strive to do that little bit more. And when I do, I know I'm going to grow. So if I can just do that little bit more every day, awesome. So what are you going to do? Here's my challenge. Here's my question. Are you going to get your journal and write down all the things you'd like to? I tell you what, if you have got a morning routine that really works, or you have got a routine, let's take the morning out, the evening out. If you've got a routine or a system or a set of elements within that system, that you know that really works for you, why don't you share it? And you can share it in a number of ways. Obviously, you can share it with people who are interested. You can bore the pants of some people by just telling them, and they're not interested, but they'll learn a little bit anyway, because it's good. Or share it here. Why don't you email me? Just like Simon did. Feedback at personaldevelopmentunplugged.com and share with me, your routine and how you do this so I can share it on a podcast. Wouldn't that be awesome? And then we're, you know, people could then pick and choose or that might inspire them to share their routine with us. And we could go, do you know what? If I followed a little bit of theirs, it would make mine even more. Or I'd be less guilty because I found another way. Or I'd be inspired. That's better than being guilty, isn't it? I'd be inspired. I'd be totally committed to that because I know I could do that. And I I can see the results that someone's already had. And I want those results. So maybe that could work for me. Or if it doesn't quite work for me, I can adapt it because I'm flexible. You know, so it's all about, and I've just noticed I've been talking and the the two things I've I've written at at the bottom of my page was, to reflect and adapt so you can make it your routine. That's exactly the sentence I wrote down the bottom of my page. Reflect, adapt, make it your routine. So check out the YouTubes. Check out the Jocko Willikens, the Tim Ferrisses. But check out yours and notice what would make your day, how it fits with your day. I know as soon as I I spoke to the guy from Australia, and th- and that life coach I was talking about, she suddenly realised that, hey, there's no way on earth I'm going to have time in the morning until maybe when the kids are at university, but <laughs> I'm not going to have that time. But I can make time in the day. And as soon as she, she got that, you could see in her face she was empowered because one thing she's doing now is she's taking control. She's taking responsibility of making those commitments and she could suddenly she could even see the benefits before she's even doing it and that's what it's all about empowering ourselves and I know with her when she's doing that she's going to be the shining example to her husband to her children because they're going to see the the difference in her they're going to feel the difference and she's going to be that shining example just as you are So could you be that shining example to yourself, to me, to everyone here? 
You bet you can. Hell yes, that's what we say, isn't it? Hell yes. So I wonder, are you going to take up my challenge to create your routine? Maybe you could add to it listening to the Personal Development Unplugged podcast more often. Or maybe you could add to it, oh, I really should commit and um, I'm going to, what's the word I'm looking for? To subscribe, that's the word I was looking for. I'm going to subscribe. Or maybe I should commit to sharing every day to someone, one person every day, this podcast. I think I've said that enough now, haven't I? Anyway, you know what I mean. Let's, let's, I love sharing stuff, you know that. And I'd love you to share. But more importantly, I'd like you to share yourself with you in a way that allows you to use your time the best you can and use the best of you in the time that you have. That was pretty awesome. I don't know where that came from. So let me know how you get on. There was a few so's in there. I'm getting them down, I think. Let me know how you get on. Share this podcast. Subscribe. Do all that stuff. Remember, sign into the hypnosis. Where is it? Can you remember? PaulCloughOnline.com forward slash podcast. There's over 40 there, and there was free gifts and things like that. So, another so, Paul Cluffy, stop it. Enjoy. Enjoy every heartbeat. Create the most flexible routine for you. And excel. And when you do, and you commit, and you set your intention to excel, I guarantee you, you'll excel more than you could think you could excel. Because that's just what happens when we do it. Because whatever you think you are, Whoever you think you are, you're more than that. Enjoy every heartbeat. And, you know, feel happy for no reason. Ta-ra. We all need time to de-stress, don't we? We all need that space. Everyone needs space. Our own place of personal retreat. And going to retreats are great. But if you can't, why not have one in your mind? You know, if you don't go to that special place... That stress just builds and builds and builds. But if you have a place in your mind where you can go and de-stress, work out problems, think of all the wonderful things that you'll be able to do. The wonderful feelings. So that's why I've created this program of four hypnosis tracks to build and be and have your own inner retreat. You can have whatever you like in that inner retreat. There can be rooms, there can be libraries, healing rooms, different lighting, maybe a fire in the corner, a special chair, maybe incense, anything that you choose. Some people have a computer that stores all the memories you've ever had, that library of everything you've ever read or everything you ever need to know. Maybe a healing room, a room where you can just go to and have your own inner healing or own inner relaxation. So what have I done? I've created these four tracks, one to build, one to extend it whenever you need to extend it and then to be able to go there for a particular period of time or even a longer period of time. So you've got two tracks of just going and being in that special place where you can, you know, take a problem with you, maybe muse it over in that special place or you can leave it there, leave it to incubate in your unconscious mind. So when you come back, where well, you can just have the answers come or they might just come consciously. It's all there for you. All you have to do is go to paulcloughonline.com forward slash retreat, have a look, give you a nice little video there, just see if it's for you. I think it's a lovely little program. There's nothing to lose because there's a 30-day money-back guarantee. It's a lovely program, and I think it was one I wanted to do for myself because I just thought it's just a wonderful thing to do. I love retreats, but hey, this is your own personal one. Have a look. Enjoy. Warning, you are now leaving the unplugged mind of Paul Clough. It's time to fly on your own. Be brave, my friend. Personal Development Unplugged.